Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to compare Google's Flutter, which runs on Dart, to Zim. So this should be fun. Let's go take a look now at uh, what we built. And this was actually built by somebody else using Dart and Flutter on CodePen and we saw it and looked at the code and we went oh my goodness me and so we rebuilt it in Zim and did a comparison so let's go in and take a look at that comparison here is Zim we bring in CreateJS and we bring in Zim we make a frame that is black and if we don't have any interactivity we should turn our rollover false and that uh, gives us maximum performance when that frame is ready, we call a function. We're going to collect the stage and stage width and stage height. We're setting a set of colors to make these planets. This data came from the example. And so this is the speed of Mercury and uh, then the, the rest of the planets compared to Mercury. So don't worry too much about that. It's the same in both codes. Here we have a new container that we're going to put our planets in. We're setting up the space between the rings of the planets based on the number and dividing by the colors dot length. So however many colors there are here, that's how many planets there are. <clears throat> setting a default speed and creating the sun in the middle there with a new circle. We're making it that radius and yellow and we're centering it on our planets. We're then looping through our colors, each time getting a color and getting an index. We set the distance of the ring based on that index and the spacing. We make a circle that is the ring, so that's the white rings. And then we create a planet uh, based on the color there. And we set the registration point to the distance away. So we're going to basically put all of the planets at the center but their registration is a distance away and that way we can just rotate the planet. So we're locating that at the sun on the planets. So each planet gets located at the sun and in the planet's um, container. Then we animate the rotation 360 degrees. We make it linear so it appears that it just keeps on going in a linear ease. We loop that so it goes forever. We set the speed of that based on the orbital velocities. So the time is based on these velocities right here <clears throat> for rotational animation. Some of those times are quite long, which at the moment we're, we've converted over to seconds. So anytime there's something that's really long, we're giving a warning saying, are you sure this is supposed to be in seconds? And so we've turned that warning off. No big deal. Usually we don't do that. Gravity zero. Where did a gravity zero and a force come in? I have no idea. Gravity and a force. There is no gravity and force here. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, I think I was experimenting with um, uh, an emitter and I must have left the emitter code. in. <laughs> well, hey, our code's even shorter. Okay, so um, I was going to have the planets uh, trail an emitter, but we thought, okay, we'll just leave it the same as the other example. So here's stars, which is a container. Now we're making a star field in behind. So we've made this a little bit bigger than your average monitor so that we know we have it color covered. We're looping 200 times and calling a function each time we loop. Here we are making a poly. Now that all looks a little bit complicated. Uh, what they did in their example is basically they made circles. And so they have these little specks and we could have done that too. But what we've done is made a poly, which can make a star. It's going to be any of these radiuses. So it will randomly pick from those radiuses. It will randomly pick from these number of sides. And it's going to take a min and a max of how pointy it is. So we could have also used min and maxes here in its radius. Probably not for the sides, because we want that to be a whole number. And we're making that white. So this is Zim V. It's very, very, very efficient for picking random things and or a series. We could have put in a series and done a series here, or it could have been the results of a function. It's called Zim Pick. It was introduced in Zim V, Zim 5. Very powerful. So we're making a bunch of random stars, basically. 
we're locating those randomly across the width of the star's container and across the height of the star's container and we're putting it in the star's container. So locating its x, its y, and which container. If you don't say which container, it will put it on the first stage that's made. We're caching the whole stars because we don't need to redraw that. Otherwise, every time we update the stage, each of those little stars would redraw from an equation. There's no, that, that would be fine doing that, but there's no point in doing that, so we cache it, and that turns all of that into a bitmap for, again, for efficiencies. When the frame resizes, we're centering our planets and we're centering our stars, and that's it. So there's our code to create those planets. Note that our frame is by default the full mode, so this is opened up now to full screen, and that's why we had to do that centering. Quite often when we build, we use the fit mode, and that handles the scaling for us. But we had to add this little bit of extra scaling, resize, uh, so that we could position things in the center as we change the size of the screen. That then looks like this. So if we change the size of the screen, that thing stays in the center like that, and the star field moves over as well. All right, let's have a look at Dart and Flutter. So we're importing some stuff. We're importing some stuff. Now, I don't know Dart, so I'm afraid that I, I can't really go through it in the same way that I did with Zim. But we've got some sort of main app that is maybe running a material app and whatever that uh, solar system thing. So, okay, some some beginnings. Here's a class called Make Solar System that extends a stateless widget. And we did notice this in Dart that there was a lot of extending stuff. And I mean, if you're just wanting to code, usually you don't have to do that much extending. And we found that uh, the examples were constantly extending this and extending that. We're going, okay. So uh, a little bit of serious stuff there. It looks a touch like C or something like that to just get some numbers. Okay. And then overriding something. We're overriding, I'm not sure what, but we've got a widget anyway in some sort of build context. They like the word context. Final size is a media query of context size. Okay, I don't know. We've got some sort of scaffold that is a uh, has some properties. So here's the stack. Now I think a stack is how they put things on top of one another would be my guess. And so we've got um, properties and their values, I guess, or parameters and their values or something like that. Position, bottom, left. I, I think that we're trying to position something. I think we've got a few closings of that nested loop. There's the star background where we're custom painting and we're using the Aulis circle path. Um, I don't know quite uh, if that's a normal thing to use. Maybe it's a, maybe it's built in or maybe it's a function that was, I think it's a function that we'll find down below. And we're passing in some, uh, a configuration object, although they don't actually use the squiggly brackets. That's interesting. I wonder if it's, it's optional to do that or not, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we're passing some things in there. We do have a container of a certain width that has some sort of box decoration that is maybe making the sun. I suspect that this is making the sun, but it couldn't say for sure. And then we've got some sort of rest thing where that's spreading out maybe the results of the planet builder on this bracket thing that we've got going on there. All right, so there's a namespace maybe, it's a widget that's a list, I don't know, planet builder, we've got some stuff happening. This is, okay, this is our array, I guess, we're gonna loop through now, the normal loop thing, and make, uh, you know, the old fashioned loop with all this kind of crap in it that everybody forgets how to do. Then after 10 years, I still can't loop like that without making a mistake half the time. Um, through the number of planets, and then we're adding a planet widget with that, okay, so that looks kind of familiar, and we're increasing the radius by an increment grade, and we're returning the planet list. The planet widget itself is extending a stateful widget. It's got some stuff up top. It's got a const planet widget with a key. 
keys and something that are required to hook up. Maybe this is binding or something like that. I don't know. And we're calling a super with a key. <laughs> and we're overriding something maybe to the planet widget state. Uh, <laughs> okay. So that, that's an arrow function, perhaps? No. It looks like a property, maybe, um, like PHP property. Anyway, doesn't really matter too much. It's doing something there. Uh, so our planet widget state underscore, or local variable maybe, or local property, extends private um, extends a state that's a planet widget with a single ticker provided state max in. Hmm. All right, and we're setting up some colors. So these are the colors. I'm sure you don't really have to do a color that way. Uh, look, there's colors purple. That's a little bit easier. But anyway, these these those are colors. Here's that velocity stuff that we had. So we, we had something like a list of colors and a list of velocities. Our list of colors were just like red, green, blue. But, you know, it could have been this stuff as well with a hex number if we, if we wanted it to. Uh, and an animation controller. So we're setting up maybe for an animation controller but we're overriding some sort of void init state with a super init state. And we're setting up the animation controller with a vsync, yes. And uh, running that in a duration of some sort of milliseconds times or vel orbital velocities two in. Look, I recognize that. So it's, uh, we're multiplying it by those orbital velocities in the array. We're animating that's going to be a tween that's starting at zero and ending at one. Ah, um, the underscore controller, which is here. So this is the stuff that we're going to animate. And I don't know if we need a listener. It looks empty, so perhaps they didn't need it. And then the controller dot repeat is, is the controller underscore control. Okay, so that animation is going to repeat. I see it there. So I suppose that could possibly be doing our whole animation of, of that. All right, good. And then we're building a widget, or we've got a widget called build, which is using or receiving a build context. Now there's no colon in there, and there's no comma, and maybe it's a data type then, build context. We're calling it context. There's that word again. And that's going to return a rotational transition, which turns based on the animation, the child. Oh, so now we're applying that animation to a child, maybe, which is an animated builder that ooh, darn holds maybe more animation stuff. And a transform translate the offset of the widget initial radius. Ah, that's like the registration point. And we're decorating it with, again, the color. Oh, something had to make the rings. So maybe maybe this is the rings versus the planets or something. Yeah, we got a little bit of nesting. And then we're allowing for a dispose of that. And that probably ends our, our first class. It looks like here's another class, which is that Olus Circle Path, which extends a custom painter. So it's got some stuff up top. And here is, it needs a radius and a radius increment and a number of planets. And then some color stuff with, I don't know, two dots. Hmm, well, maybe that's for a parent or something. Dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Yeah, probably is. Maybe it's the super, that's how you call a super. So then we're overriding again, some void paint canvas size stuff with a final path is equal to path. I don't even remember having a path, but maybe there, why wasn't there a new path? Like what's with the capital letter there? Double radius equals, double new radius equals radius for int and we're adding oval. So this might be this, yeah, I think this is the rings, right? Cause this is a whole rings class, great. And should we repaint that? Let's return true. Or is that like a stage.update? I'm not sure. Should repaint? Maybe. Okay. And here are the stars. We haven't gotten to the stars yet. So the stars, they did 50 stars. I think I did 200 stars. 
um, and we're overriding a, a widget build build context and we're returning a safe area that's important uh, and we're adding some children to the stack to get the stars we're getting the stars which is holding it in an array and we're looping through the number we're randomizing the location of that we're offsetting the x and that's how you set the x and y no kidding holy moly <laughs> okay not just loop this you know comma that it's ooh, well anyhow maybe it's similar Maybe that's what offset. Yeah, offset could be just similar to look. And the child is a container that has a width and a height of 2.5. So that no random stuff. That's just one size. Along with some colors, we're decorating. The, we're decorating the, those star circles. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay. Gosh. This, this is sort of, this is new circle. <laughs> Dot look, maybe. Um, anyway, uh, then stars widget, we're returning the stars. We've got a list of random stuff. I don't know, maybe, oh, this was some sort of thing to get a random size of the doodah doodah. Um, basically, what this is, is um, how, many, how many lines? 250 lines of code in comparison to I don't know, 50 lines of code, something like that. And it's uh, Zim is 26% the size of that other stuff, a quarter of it. And like, just like way, way, way more readable. <laughs> it's just like un unbelievable. It's almost like somebody did that on purpose to be obtuse or humorous or something it's sort of like we are engineers let's put together a dot and make it so that people have to do this <laughs> so anyway i would say that dart is not for the faint of heart it may have perhaps some advantages in going out to native but i haven't noticed any problem uh working on mobile in javascript at all uh so We'll leave that up to you. This has been a Zim Explorer. Have you had fun? Is this neat? Uh, I kind of like it. I thought that was a good explorer. We should explore some more different types of libraries one time, wouldn't you say? I am Dr. Abstract, out here in space. <sighs> Come join us at zimjs.com slash slack if you want to talk about things. Bye.